Hello and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's Ben Carvel from API3 with Dan from Birds Money. Um, thank you very much for finding some time today, Dan. It's, it's great to, to have you here. Um, people may or may not know that we have had a, a partnership framework in place with Bird for, for, for a few months now, actually. Um, and uh, there, there's a very unique sort of way that Bird Money is hoping to capitalize on uh, accessing real world data um, via, of course, API3's Air Node. And uh, Dan is, is leading the efforts from Bird Bunny. So, yeah, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Ben. Very happy to be here. And uh, yeah, API3 was one of Bird's earliest partners. So, it's uh, it's long overdue that we, we finally get a chance to, to do this. Absolutely. We are. My name is Daniel Stevens. As, as you said, Ben, I'm the CEO of Bird Money. Um, I am a data scientist uh, by trade, worked for a variety of different companies of all sizes, uh, you know, big companies like Google, small companies that you probably haven't heard of. And for the last couple of years, I've been uh, full time into crypto. Um, like a lot of people, I got into crypto uh, five or six years ago uh, in mining, um, started learning how to build Ethereum miners. And, and that is what kind of got me initially excited about crypto, uh, getting to see you know, how consensus works, you know, how powerful it is to have, you know, disintermediated technologies and really haven't looked back since. So mm. uh, we're really excited for what Aim Bird's been doing and excited to be able to share it with you here today. Interesting. Uh, it's, it, everyone has their own little uh, onboarding story, right, into, yep. into Web3. Yep. So so how, how did you go from, um, I guess, that experience of, of you know, mining, operating, you know, contributing to the operational side of the network to, I guess, in the, you know, where, where you're at today with Bird. And, and I don't know if that's also a chance to kind of expand on what you guys are doing. You know, our, our goal is really simple. Um, we want to take uh, what worked in Web 2 when it comes to user experience via machine learning, and we want to improve upon it. Um, and primarily in two different ways. Um, way number one, I already mentioned, which is we believe that, that the users that are affected by these algorithms should have control over how they're built, where they're deployed, when they're updated, which doesn't exist today. And number, you know, the second point is they make these companies billions of dollars and yeah. it can't be built without my user data, your user data, everyone's user data. So, you know, is it really fair that all I get is, you know, a free Gmail account or, you know, a cool Facebook feed when these guys are pulling in billions of dollars a quarter? I'm not sure. Um, so that's that's the genesis of Bird. Uh, that's that's why we're here. Interesting, interesting. And um, so, so Bird is a uh, an analytics tool for people looking to form credit scores. And uh, you're, you're doing that through a, a mix, well, through a unique algorithm as, as putting two and two together there and, and um, helping, I, I assume, DeFi lenders understand um, the, the kind of uh, boundaries of, of whether they should or shouldn't lend to, to individuals um, based on their activity history, right? Credit was really the jumping off point for Bird. Mm. Um, you know, like, like many good startups, we've been evolving our, our strategy really ever since we started. Um, you know, we test and learn, we take in the cues from the market and we, uh, you know, build things that have a greater need. And yeah. for us, we immediately saw the importance of creating individualized lending terms for each person that connects to, you know, a lending app. Um, mm -hmm. But that really became an impetus to think about user experience in general, right? It doesn't matter if you're connecting to a lending app, a staking app, uh, airdrop app, you name it, any any kind of Web3 connected app right now, doesn't matter who connects, doesn't matter what's in their wallet, you get the exact same user experience. And, and I think to really put a fine point on it, um, the blockchain shopping platforms, they, they really expose you know, just how far Web3 has to go to, to really start matching Web2. And if you go to shopping.io and you connect a wallet that has a million dollars in it, and then you connect a wallet that has no money in it, you're going to get the exact same search results. And so like, you know, imagine that you're somebody who's pretty affluent and you're searching for a watch, you know, why would you show me a $5 swatch? Um, and conversely, right? If, if I'm showing up and I've only got a few hundred dollars in my wallet, why would you show me a $25,000 Rolex, right? Yeah, so absolutely. 
What we are all about is helping Web3 start to cultivate the same type of user experience that's made Web2 so successful, right? Your Facebook account, your Twitter account, your Google searches, they're not the same as anyone else. And that's because those platforms have learned to deliver a customized set of features and content based off of your user data. We're doing the same thing for Web3 platforms. Are you, are you seeing uh, are you seeing any kind of early use cases emerge or early kind of demands of, of that sort of tooling? Um, yeah. From yes. yeah, you are Super absolutely. Um, our so if you check out our website, we've we've developed three unique products. One is credit, mm -hmm. as you've mentioned. Uh, another is an e-commerce product for prospecting. And then a third one is for decentralized launch pads. And we have had a tremendous amount of interest from decentralized launch pads um, for, for kind of two different reasons. Um, our initial plan was that, you know, all investors are not created equal. Um, and when it comes to a young project, you know, with fragile liquidity, you care who your early investors are because you know, your liquidity is really important. You know, your market is really important. And so if you had a mechanism to offer long-term investors better investment terms and incentivize more of them to be in your holder base initially and disincentivize the type of investors that are more likely to you know pump and dump and do that sort of thing that's in the best interest of those young projects and so we've seen a lot of uh attraction from developing a product like that but the other thing that that launch pads have gotten really excited about is the ability to use on-chain data for gamification so, you know, we're looking into ways to, to cluster uh, various wallets together and start inferring a bit about, you know, what their similarities are, um, why they should be important uh, customers for launch pads. And then launch pads can use that information to issue badges or adjust their tiering system. So um, they're seeing a lot of value in being able to classify, you know, their investors the moment they connect their wallet and then update the way that their platform behaves in a way that makes sure that these young projects, they they attract the best investors possible at that critical phase. But thank you so much for, for finding the time to speak to us. And as I said, I'm looking forward to working with you guys in the future, experimenting with the, the off-chain real world data that we can provide into the model and, and seeing how we can um, either complement the four products that you've got or, or kind of inspire new new kind of uh yeah offerings that you may bring so thank yeah. you so much for finding some time likewise man it's been a pleasure and i'm definitely looking forward to a rich partnership in the future thanks so much cheers dan cool thanks man